Hello, everyone. I'm very excited to introduce uh, Yudar. He's a machine learning science um, at book.com. And he'll talk about uh, recommendation system um, evaluation. Thank you, Yudar. You can. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Yudar. And today, I am going to talk about recommendation systems evaluation and NBIT A-B testing approach with insights from industry. Why? I am going to talk about it. So I worked in different companies where we try to implement uh, recommendation systems. And I noticed the same problem in each company. So it's uh, difficult to evaluate offline and online effect and reduce the gap between offline and online evaluation. And today, we start with overview of recommendation systems. After this, we talk a little bit about difference between offline evaluation and online, and how to reduce the gap between offline and online metrics. I'm sure that everyone knows how recommendation systems works, but let's try to do uh, a little introduction to recommendation systems. So first question is, where can we use the recommendation systems? And short answer that we can use this in any place. It could be streaming platforms, travel, flights, like booking.com, e-commerce, or media, or social network, everything. And each business domain requires specific approach and specific recommendation systems model. But, of course, we can make some structure of our exist models. Of course, we remember about collaborative filtering. This approach based on matrix interactions between users and items. Uh, and we can build vectors for users and for items and try and find sim similar items for users or similar users for item. And one approach is when we use all matrix. Another approach, when we make the compile, uh, the compile our matrix for two matrix. One matrix is with latent user vectors. Another matrix is this, uh, with item vectors. The second approach is that content-based filtering model. So it's close, it's similar with classical classification problem. We union user features, item features, and we try to predict target like uh, 0 or 1. And 1 means that it's positive feedback from user, and 0 is negative or nothing. But uh, state of the art in the market, in the industry, is a hybrid model where we combine previous approaches. So usually we use user features item features, and embeddings or output from simple models, from first level models, and we build the second layer of model. And some company in industry uh, make more layers. For example, they can use five, 10 layers of models, where each model generates candidates for second, for second model, second model generates candidates for third model, and it could be very complexity systems. Uh, why I talking about this? So we can notice that recommendation systems in comparison of classical machine learning could be very complex systems. It means that we have gap between offline and online metrics, and we need to be careful with evaluation of these systems. And it is a question how to do these right evaluations. Of course, in the recommendation systems area, we can measure different metrics, different offline metrics. It could be regression metrics, if we try to predict rank. It could be accuracy metrics, if we try to evaluate the quality of the top-end recommendations in terms of binary classification. But of course, usually we use ranking metrics, we evaluate, try to evaluate uh, the quality of the top-end recommendations, 
taking into account positions. It's, for example, mean average precision or NDCG or something like this. But another question in the recommendation systems that if we, we use only regression, accuracy, or ranking metrics, it's not enough. Also, we need to think about beyond accuracy metrics. So this type of metrics helps us to evaluate recommendations in terms of user experience. For example, we can measure, we need to measure diversity in our recommendation list. We need to measure novelty. For example, if you are Spotify uh, and try to predict which music you want to listen, so you need usually to use more new items. Or for example, if you are offline retail or online retail, probably it's better to recommend you your previous items. And also, uh, and we have exist trends where we also need to evaluate bias in our recommendations. And also we need to measure stability of our recommendation systems. And we have questions. What is the right metric? So I don't have answers for this questions because it depends and always depends on business domain, on business area. Is, is it the key? We need to choose one of the list, one, one metric from our lists and try to use this metric as a proxy for our online metrics. And it depends on your domains how to choose this metric. Uh, okay, imagine that we build complex recommendation system pipeline. We choose offline metric. We measure beyond accuracy metrics like di diversity or novelty. But still, how choose relevant online metrics to evaluate our effect, our business effect? We can start again that these metrics depend on business area. For example, I work in FinTech if the main metric was registration of applications or converse, uh, conversion in the applying credit cards. And even in travel, inside travel, like booking, we have different type of metrics for flights and for accommodations. It depends on domain. And also, of course, of, uh, in uh, majority, time, majority times, we use quantitative analysis, so we choose relevant business metrics to measure our business effect. And after this, usually we run a B experiment, but I want to describe that this time we focus only on the short-term metrics. So because uh, our resources is limited and we cannot measure long-term effects. And this reason also it's very useful trick in industry which can help before A B test you need to do product analysis. What does it mean? So we need to uh, understand our customer. We need to do customer development, user studies experiments. For example, what is uh, more important for our customers? To make our recommendations more diversity, to get discovery experience, or to get novelty experience, or we can recommend only popular items, and it, it will be enough. And we need to do this analysis uh, using customer development, for example, and it helps us to focus on the long-term effects. Sometimes it could be even better than A-B test, but I think that we need to do it together. Okay, we choose short-term metric. Uh, it could be conversion rate or, or something like this, but also we need to think about threshold between short-term and long-term metrics. Of course, every business wants to increase long-term metrics like lifetime value, if I talk about streaming service, or amount of subscribers, but we cannot do a B test experiment because it takes one year. And again, we need to try to find optimal threshold between amount of data, experiment duration, and value for product. Okay, for example, we found this threshold. 
uh, but another problem which we can have, so it's the novelty effect. Usually in the recommendation systems, you have one type of algorithm. It's, it's our old machine learning algorithm. And we, for example, start to recommend clickbait uh, items in our streaming service. Of course, in the beginning, and even during the beginning of A-B test, we can notice incre incremental value in terms of our business metrics. But if we wait two, three months, uh, this effect could be decreased. Because in the beginning, of course, our users like the novelty things, like the novelty uh, recommendation systems list. But after this, they want to get more experience. But I have two key how to solve these problems. So the first key that we need to use specific metric for, uh, for each segment of users. In the recommendation systems area, it could be three group of users, hot users, cold users, warm users. And for example, for hot users, we need to increase retention metrics because we want uh, that our users return in our service and spend more time in our service. But in the same time, for cold users, we can increase conversion rate, uh, conversion metrics like CTR, because we want to involve our users in our service. The, the second key that we need to build hierarchy of metrics. So it's the main trick from industry is if we build hierarchy of metrics, it could be very useful for us. It should be one primary business metric, and uh, we need to decompose this metric for submetrics, and you and use each submetric for specific segment. For example, it is an example of hierarchy of metrics in the streaming service like Netflix, and we need to. Uh, use this tree to understand how we affect our systems using our machine learning models. But still, for example, we build this hierarchy of metrics. For example, we use offline and online metrics. But we still have a gap between online and offline metrics. And uh, if we talk about how to reduce this gap, short answer, uh, we can do nothing. But long answer is that we have several options. First options, we can test our systems in production. And for example, if the new model does not decrease majority of line metrics, but for example, our favorite of line metrics in increase, we can run production and see what happens. Also, we can use a proxy experiment, like interleaving experiment, which uh, we described in the previous article from Booking.com. Also, we can use, can use multi-armed bandits framework to decrease this effect. But the secret key is that we can also predict A-B test metrics based on offline metrics, or try to find correlations between offline and online. What does it mean? Uh, so probably we can log in of our A-B testing history and collect this history and try to find correlations. And of course, how I say before, so we need to use product analysis and try to build hierarchy of metrics. Is it the main difference if we compare this, this area, recommendation systems or ranking area with other area? like classical machine learning. And usually, I noticed in different companies that researchers use the naive solution. Uh, not all of this, but 70%. So they monitor favorite offline metrics, like ROCAWOC, Precision, and DCG, and look for these combinations of offline metrics. They increase offline metrics, and they hope that online metrics uh, will increase too. But 
it didn't work well. The smart solution is that we logging our offline metric and online metric of the A-B tests, building stable infrastructure, using general training and validation pipeline, and after this, we can, try, we can try to find correlations between offline metrics and online metrics. It's not the key, but it could be help us to uh, de decrease problems uh, with this gap. But still, another problem uh, where we try to build these systems, which try to decrease, reduce the gap between offline and online, is a feedback loop problem in recommendation systems. What does it mean? We learn our model, we train our model on data which has a bias because this history also was, uh, was output from previous model, and it is a loop. It means that we, we don't have right offline metrics because we try to predict our offline history, which is also output from previous models. But, but of course, for this, we also have a solutions. We can use global control group to reduce these effects. We can use multi-armed bandits and more complex solutions, but I, I only want to share these links for this and that's all. In the summary, I want to say that in recommendation systems, we need to choose the right combination of offline metrics that will be our proxy for the main online metrics. And I wanted to say that it's more important than even than choose the right models. Choosing the right offline metrics is more important. Also, uh, if we want to increase value for your product step by step, you need to build hierarchy of the online metrics, choose the right balance between short-term and long-term effects, and uh, try to test this hypothesis via A-B test. But again, remember about novelty effect, remember about feedback loop effect, and still we will have the gap between online and offline metrics. So, and this problem is the most challenging issue in recommendation systems. Of course, if, if we can solve this, we can build model, increase money, and it, it, it's all. But that's not true. But we can reduce uh, this problem. How? We need to build stable machine learning pipeline, we need to build stable A-B test and offline evaluation schema, and next step, we can try to find correlation between online and offline metrics. Thank you for your attention.